Thank you, councillors. We are back live. We'll move on to, in the agenda. And the next item on the agenda is um, the local government rating amendment bill attachment nine, pages 159 through to 161. Can I ask staff who's going to take us through this? This is essentially a letter of submission that we will be making to government with regard to this bill. Uh, Mr. Hodder, please. Yes, thank you. Um, this this piece of legislation um, was announced just before Waitangi Day, and the fact that submissions are called for by the 17th of May means suggests that government is really keen to get this one through. Um, the main thing to bear in mind about this amendment bill is that it's permissive on local authorities. But there are a couple of interesting things um, which I've noted in the agenda note, and I'll just, just comment on them. It allows councils to separate, to divide separate rating areas from a large rating unit. And that's significant um, for, for Maori land, um, which isn't often able to be individualized title. And this means then that the, um, if you look at say the Ratna situation, when the new, uh, the new um, subdivision that's going on there, um, it will be possible if, and it's if the, the, uh, the owner of the site wishes and if council wishes, um, separate rating areas can be put in place. Um, and um, the second thing to bear in mind is that the, there's a bit more emphasis on trying to give rates remissions for Māori freehold land, which is under development. Now, Council's own policy does actually allow for that. It's extremely rare that anyone has come to the council or the rates remission, the Maori Land Rates Remission Committee with that particular proposal in mind. Um, but what this does, I think, is highlight that opportunity. And so the submission really is supportive of, of what the bill is proposing. It just raises a simple question. Um, and it wasn't quite clear because the, the, the legislation talks about how the, um, if you like, the if you're going to have separate rating areas, then the rates for each of the rating areas should not be greater than the, than the total area. And while that is logical at the start, um, one, it's important that it becomes clear that that is just at the start and not forever. Um, but that's really the, uh, uh, it, the, the submission is supportive. Um, there's a number of machinery provisions which are useful in terms of, particularly in terms of dealing with historical arrears, because there has been some of those. Um, and I've, the suggestion is that it'll be over to the, the mayor to decide whether um, he wishes to talk to the submission. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hodder. Um, I'm fully supportive of this motion, and as such, I'm happy to move recommendations one and two as a block. First, of all, the first one would be that we receive the submission, and secondly, that I would be speaking to it um, to the Māori Committee on Local Government Rating. So, appearing before. Uh, government with regard to this one are incredibly uh, relevant to our district and it matches up with quite a lot of the work that we have been doing for some time. So I will move those as a block. Councillor Belsham, are you seconding? Yes, that's correct. Any questions from councillors? Um, look, I think I can put this one straight through to an adoption. So I'd like to um, vote on it, please. 
those supporting the motion. That is everybody. Thank you, the motion is carried. I would like to note that um, Councillor Hira has left the meeting for the, for the afternoon because of a prior um, Zoom meeting that is important. I'm coming with clarification, Your Worship. Um, in recommendation to... You need to speak up. Sorry, uh, for recommendation two, I just wanted to check that um, you uh, had moved the um, without amendment. Um, Not without to, amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. I'll now move to the administrative matters. I think they're page uh, 169 from memory. And I'll pass through to the Chief Executive. Thank you to take us through this item. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, there's, I'll just have the uh, document tabled um, as read um, and happy to take any questions on it. Sorry, my correction is at 162, the administrative matters. To take any questions around this? Kirsten, Councillor Wilson. Uh, just a, a update, uh, any further comment around the district plan? change update uh, apart from what is there? Uh, actually, Mr. Hodder might be able to comment further on that. Yes, um, thank you. Um, it, we're, we're working with um, a number of submitters to, to um, clarify specifically some of their concerns and address to, and prepare a further paper, which would go to the to the hearing commissioner. Um, this will do two things. One, it'll it will actually shorten the hearing process. Also, I think make it clearer for the commissioner as to um, how the the district plan uh, could be approved um, under conditions. So th the discussions include the New Zealand Transport Agency and keep. Kiwi Rail. Uh, thank you, Mr. Horror. I, I will also um, let councillors know I have written to Minister Jones and Minister Parker. Minister Parker has gone out to all councils saying that he has concerns around the hold up and consenting holding up um, spade ready projects. And so I said to him that we are in the final stages of, of the hearing process, that the information has been put in front of, by and large, put in front of um, the commissioner. Uh, I've yet to hear back. So it's a clarification around process and a direct question from um, those two ministers. This would be our most significant spade ready project that we have ever had and probably our region has ever had. Does that answer your question, Councillor Wilson? Uh, yes, uh, Your Worship, and just um, thank you for the impotence that you're uh, putting on through it and, and staff as well. It's uh, certainly a significant project that we cannot allow to, uh, to be delayed. Thank you. Uh, further questions, Councillor Belsham. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a comment, I guess, around um, in the report on uh, item one, COVID-19. And um, I'd just like to make comment that um, I think I'd like to thank the staff as you have, Your Worship, in your um, mayoral report, but the staff and the efforts that they've put in during this period um, of of uncertainty has been outstanding and just sitting in on that IMT pandemic team and and looking at what the work um, that that staff and volunteers have been putting uh, in throughout our district is exemplary and I really really think that shows the shows the heart of Rangatike and um, and the heart of the staff within the council so, so um, I'd just like um, to um, pass on my thank you, and probably on behalf of all council councillors, um, to the to Peter and the team. Um, it's it's just been excellent, and I think you've handled this um, process very well. So um, uh, please pass on uh, respect and, and thanks to the team. 
I was going to say, is there a question in that? But I'll, I'll take the sentiments on board. I have questions um, from councillors Duncan, Gordon and Dalgetty. I'll take them in that order. And uh, then there'll be a further response from the Chief Executive. Councillor Duncan first. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, I, my question is um, your mention of the shovel ready projects. Uh, I understand that we have put um, to the Provincial Growth Fund, I believe that's where the fund's coming from, for the Mungaweka Bridge. But at this stage, I didn't realise that the, um, the potential uh, wood processing in the Rangitiki was also under that umbrella. Yeah, there'll be a response from both of us. From me, um, with regards to the Mangaweka Bridge, um, yes, we put that forward as a spade ready project. It was subsequently approved by government, so the funding is all in place. There'll be some consenting things that still have to happen, etc. But we will be able to move hopefully reasonably quickly with that. Um, the second one, in terms of the, the bioforestry, slightly different process, um, but equally notice has been served to, to government. I'll move to the Chief Executive comment further on those, those two items. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, um, I think it's important to, um, to be clear on, on what was considered a shovel-ready project. Um, and how that funding was created within government. And I can talk a little bit about that. Um, the Shovel Ready projects um, was a way to build um, impetus into the economy post, or I guess at, at a time of perceived recession. Um, and there was $800 million that had been taken from um, the Provincial Growth Fund and put into, into that. Um, our council submitted only one project to that that we considered met the criteria that was stated um, in the Shovel Ready Projects application. Um, I'm aware that other councils looked at that differently and I'll, I'll explain how we saw it. Um, so the only project we submitted was the Mangawika Bridge replacement. Um, worship is correct that that project has now been given funding by NZTA to the tune of 4.6 million. That didn't come from the Shovel Ready Project budget. Uh, that came from NZTA budget. Uh, and us submitting it may or may not have had uh, the, the impact that allowed them to make a very quick decision. Um, fact is the decision's made and we're happy and I'm not going to really go into it in any great detail. Um, because of the fact that the, the decision has been made. Um, so you could say that one out of the one projects has been funded uh, and, and we'll start work. As, as, as Worship said, there are some things we need, lizard management plans, et cetera, uh, in order to get that across. Um, what I've, I've asked the team to look at, led by Arno, is what does a, a secondary table look like, which is not quite shovel ready? Uh, or um, not quite make the threshold of shovel ready. And the shovel, one of the shovel ready thresholds was uh, the value of the project. And we don't get many projects of that size uh, in the Rangitika. And, and so we have uh, started to collate a spreadsheet that we called not quite shovel ready, which was should the government move to provide funding for further economic impetus, then we could draw on a number of projects that we feel uh, could be eligible uh, in the future. Uh, and that is things that we've already thought of. So uh, bulls to marsh and waste water, um, things like uh, a new civic centre in Taihapi, a new civic centre in Martin, et cetera. And we've also included other things, which are um, things like walkways or cycleways, um, these kind of things. And we've, you could almost call it a, a, a wish list in some of the things we're putting uh, into this spreadsheet, but it's still things that we feel that should there be funding or consenting or whatever, we could start work very quickly. Um, so that's our sort of not quite shovel ready um, project. 
Um, I could give a, a little more update on, on what's next for Mangaweka if, if that was uh, of interest. Um, and I'd ask Anai to do that, but only if there was a question. Do um, do you wish a further update on Mangaweka councillors? Can you just raise your hand if you would like further information? Yes, we would, please. So um, perhaps, uh, in fact, I think that was a submitted question. Um, Arno, are you able to respond to that, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Mangaweka Bridge, uh, as, um, as Peter described, we have to go through the last consenting step, which is a, a lizard uh, management plan. Uh, that's expected to take maybe two or three weeks uh, from now. And then after that, we will go out to tender. Um, tender process, we suspect, will take probably two months. I reckon another month to then uh, evaluate the tenders and award. So we should be able to start building uh, very early in the new financial year. Um, and that's about where that is. Um, Arno, thank you. I think the question from memory, and I might be served to be incorrect here, was quite specific also around whether there needs to be land purchase to be finalised. Is that the case? Uh, good memory, absolutely correct, uh, Your Worship. So the question was about um, the holdup was land purchase. That's all been um, sorted out uh, and completed. And the project has moved on from the. Unfortunately, though, it has caused a delay of probably about a month and a half, two months. Thank you very, thank you very much, um, Councillor Duncan. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you, Your, your Worship. Can I just uh, take this opportunity to say to back up what um, Councillor Belsham was saying before? Um, I've had personal uh, people. Um, ringing me up and texting me and saying what a fantastic job the council is doing with um, the groceries and the and the books from the libraries, etc. Um, I just want to pass that on and endorse that thanks to the staff. Look, rather than every councillor saying the same message here, um, can we have a show of hands endorsing what council staff have been involved with and doing? I'm not only getting a show of hands, but I'm also getting some clapping. <laughs> um, thank you very much, councillors. We incredibly appreciate the work that staff and welfare and community have been doing. I'll move to the next question from Councillor Gordon. I think you were next. Uh, no question for me, Your Worship. It's been answered. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dalgetty, you had a question? Um, my, no, we've answered my question. Did I miss somebody else before I move back to the Chief Executive? I think you've covered what you wanted to say. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm. Any further questions of the report from anyone? Right, would somebody like to move the, the receipt, please, of the report? <laughs> Councillor Duncan moving. Councillor Brian Carter seconding. Those in favour? Those against, carried. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the resuming meetings of council committees and community boards, and it's an agenda note. Do you wish to speak to it? Um, I'll invite Mr Hodder. Are you online, Mr. Hodder? Yes, I am. Yes. Um, this is simply to, um, I suppose, look 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 ahead. Um, when Council met on the 24th of March, um, it made decisions that related to Alert Level 4. Um, but as we've discovered, Alert Level 3 doesn't allow um, Council to have meetings other than on this basis. And while that's practical for council, um, it becomes more complex for committees and particularly community committees and reserve management committees. So what's been suggested here is that we identify a process so that whenever, whenever the government um, makes it possible for us to have um, normal meetings again, then at that point, we'll then 
resume the normal schedule, um, program the meetings, prepare the order papers. So that's, it's just simply a machinery provision rather than coming back to council at the end of next month when in fact we might be able to be in that situation already. Thank you very much, Mr. That's just an information item to councillors. Any questions from councillors around that? No, thank you. I will then move on. We'll move to the item number. Sorry. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Wilson, your question. Sorry. Uh, just, just wondering if that information is going to be fed to the community committee and chairs. Yes, we will do so. Thank you. Thank you. Is your recommendation compatible with the amendment? Um, I don't think it's just the information. We can move it, yeah. Look, just for formality's sake, I'll move the receipt of that as an item. Um, so in, the, in the agenda notes, there is a recommendation. Okay, can you, yes, it's on page eight. Thank you. I'm just being corrected quite rightly. On page eight, we have. On page eight, we have a recommendation that council bearing in mind its resolution of the 24th of March, 20 and section eight of the COVID-19 response legislation act 2020 determines that all scheduled meetings of council committees, including to review a car, community committees, community boards, rural ward supply management committees and reserve management will recommence two weeks after the epidemic um, preparedness COVID-19 notice expires or is revoked. I'll move that. Looking for a second or two. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dunn. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you. My apologies to staff. We'll move, move now to the top 10 projects and their status as of April this year. Um, Councillors, I have asked the Chief Executive to include in the top 10, which will make top 11, um, the Hereford Heights. Um, it is not specifically our project, but it overlaps into us. And I've asked that it be included as an item within this bracket of work. But I'll pass the Chief Executive and we'll go through them in order, please, to make it a little bit faster. Thank you. The attachment 11, pages 177 is the start. Yep. Thank you. So for Arno, please. Uh, all right, I think uh, just to take into consideration the challenges I have with my connectivity as well, I'd like to uh, shorten this up as much as I can. So. Can I, if it um, if it pleases everybody, can I take this as read and um, and just ask questions if you have any? Uh, I think the only thing I really want to mention is that under the lockdown uh, provisions, it was difficult to have progress on most of these projects. Although we still um, we still did have progress on quite a lot of them, so I think it's a pretty good outcome for us. So if you have any questions and if you're happy with uh, with that idea, then uh, then I'm happy to answer them. I'm very, very happy with that idea, but I'll take the questions in order. Having dealt with the Mangaleka Bridge, are there any further questions around that one? No. Questions around the Martin to Bulls wastewater centralisation project? Any questions there? No. Um, the upgrade of the Ratana wastewater treatment plant. Essentially, we are still waiting for land purchase or a, an agreement that we can lease under. Um, Thank you. Uh, I can add to that, Your Worship. Um, uh, during prior or prior to Ratana uh, celebrations in January, you wrote a letter to the Prime Minister. Um, uh, seeking some clarification uh, and support to our initiative regarding the difficulty we had in finding land. Uh, I was subsequently contacted by the Department of Internal Affairs. Um, I reminded Internal Affairs um, a week and a half ago that we were still waiting for the outcome from the Ministry of the Environment. 
um, in Tim Lafayette's um, uh, made that inquiry and Arno was, uh, receives um, the response, which is represented in, in the report. Um, so I thank you for your intervention. Thank you. Uh, questions around the sustainable provision of stock and irrigation water. Item four, Councillor Belgian. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a question in regards with the monthly update on it, and it's in regards with RDC and MDC are investig investigating ways to work together at the development um, of the scheme. Where are MDC at with their stock water um, scheme, and does that put a delay on on where we were at with our with our provisions? Because I know we were a fair way along, um, fair way along through this project. So I uh, guess question of where where are we at, or, or sorry, where are MDC at? And will that put a delay on this? Yeah, first of all, with regards to MDC, there are two separate schemes, and please don't be confused between the two. The first is a, a very localised scheme around uh, Ohakia, and that's in response to uh, groundwater contamination. But the scheme I think that you are referring to principally is a stock water scheme on the other side of the Rangitake River. Um, they've had two or three meetings. It has stalled a little bit, um, especially with the drought. Uh, some of those farmers um, are questioning, can they afford to buy in? I haven't talked to Helen. I've got a meeting with Mayor Helen um, as soon as we move out of lockdown. That's one of the items on the agenda. Um, it is independent to us. Um, I do attend some of their meetings um, just so that I can give them further information. Um, we are supportive in that regard, but they are two totally independent. Things. They will undoubtedly go to government seeking support. The big difference is when our rural water schemes were set up, they were set up on a, virtually a dollar for dollar basis with central government that opportunity hasn't been passed at this stage to Manawatu. Does that answer your question? Yes, uh, somewhat. I guess my concern was I, I fully appreciate um, working in collaboration uh, between the two schemes and making sure that we're, we're not duplicating work that's already been done. But um, I guess my concern was about stalling our process with how far we are through it um, if MDC was still at a very early stage of theirs, and that, that's where my concern would be. No, we're only really supporting in, in the fact that they have had access to some of our um, minutes and expenses in terms of running this scheme, so it gives them some idea of scale. So they're picking up some of our prior knowledge, knowledge and that's all really. Okay, no, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number five, the future management of community housing. Any questions there? No. Uh, item number six. Oh, Councillor Gordon. Sorry, Councillor Gordon. Just re in reference to the, the demolition, whereabouts were those buildings? Which ones were they? Quotes have been sourced for the demolition of both buildings. Is that the Tui Street in Tai Happy? That's my understanding, yes. Thank you. I do not believe they confirmed. Uh, Gailene, are you still online? Do you wish to comment around that? Okay. okay. Item number six, the Bulls Multi-Purpose Community Centre. There'll be a number of questions around that. I'll pass straight to the Chief Executive. There are two things I'd um, bring to, to the attention of, of uh, councillors. Um, the, the first is that we've been um, provided with uh, guidance uh, from MB to public sector agencies regarding um, the contractual implications of um, construction projects that are within uh, the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, it's, it's fair to say that uh, MB have asked us to be 
um, particularly fair, if that's a, um, a nice way to put it, um, with our, our, our contractors. Uh, and we are working um, with them to ensure that their uh, return to work doesn't um, uh, have an undue effect to their, to the, to their, uh, to their costs and their time. Um, so we're working with that directly with, with them. Um, there will be obviously a delay. Um, we have yet to agree exactly um, when work will start back on site. Uh, work can technically start on site. Um, we've been advised that productivity would, if they were to start now, would be only one third of that prior to the lockdown uh, under, under level three. Um, so we're working with them to make sure that we uh, and they have safe systems of work that are aligned to uh, government uh, rules and working with them separately regarding um, how we compensate them fairly for uh, the, the challenges that we've all occurred, uh, that, that we've all um, faced. Um, secondly, you would have seen an email from Bonnie uh, on some of the, if I can move on, yep, uh, on some of the um, uh, design elements. Um, those design elements have come from a, a third party uh, they were um, provided to the governance group of which some of you are members uh, and they were there, for, they were pre pre prepared here for uh, your information. Um, the, the one thing that uh, I would say um, is we're trying to find a balance between making sure we use as much uh, local suppliers and product as possible versus doing things as um, fiscally prudent, uh, prudently as possible. Uh, an example that I would, I would bring to, to you uh, is um, the design includes uh, for whenua. Um, that for whenua has been um, uh, uh, budgetary priced at uh, about, oh, no, I'm just being careful of the public. Um, uh, no, I'll say the number, um, of about $10,000, um, but that would be, uh, sorry, for the material, uh, and that would be um, a, uh, a New Zealand sourced tantalised piece of, um, of wood. The alternative is if it was a native piece of timber sourced from the Rangitike, it could be in excess of $25,000. And um, so these are some of the, the, uh, the challenges that we're, we're dealing with at the moment to find out where, um, where that setting might sit because I fear that there'll be um, a public comment, um, whether it be uh, sourced from without, out of the district and less expensive uh, or sourced within the district, but costs more expensive. I have had a conversation with the chief executive offline around this. Um, there is a source that I think that I can go to locally, um, which would be far more affordable. But I'd need to get the, the requirements um, and, and do some checking, but it's something that we will look into. Certainly, I have sent a, an email back to staff that where possible, um, product should be sourced locally. Thank you. I'll move to Councillor Dunn. You'll have to unmute, please, Councillor. Thank you. My apologies. Um, how about with if a contractor could actually do the work? like the laser cutting and so on within the Rangitiki. Exactly. That was my exactly my view, councillor, and I've, I've made them fully aware of the capability that we have currently involved. Thank you. Right, we'll move to item number seven, the development of the cover, Devonport, Abraham, Williams site in Martin, um, which is under the lockdown. This is literally stood still because the next stage is really a form of public consultation. Any questions? No, thank you. Item eight, 
<laughs> the Tai Haki Memorial Park development. I think we can take this as a, an item we've covered today. But any further questions around it? Andy, I, I was going to quickly move on, Councillor, but Councillor Dalgetty, please. Sorry, I just wondered, um, we were going to have a workshop with the, the lady around um, engagement at, from up north. Is that cancelled or um, postponed or what's happening with that? Excuse me. Um, there were a series of clashes and we tried as hard as we possibly could. So um, at the moment it's been cancelled. We'll... we'll potentially have a conversation around that in the future, depending on what happens. But at the moment, we, Thank you. we can't do anything. I, I, um, I understand your feelings, Councillor. Um, item number nine, Tai Happy Civic Centre. We're in the same position there. Any questions? No. Item 10, the Martin Dam Spillway Repair. <coughs> Councillor Wilson, and I will acknowledge, Councillor, that you are also the Chair of our Assets Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, at a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, when our extra order meeting, it was indicated that uh, contractors would be on site uh, this week. Uh, so a question for, um, for Arno, our infrastructure manager there. Are they on site? Uh, is there any uh, concerns initially at this stage? And have they uh, started to prep the area? What stage are we at? Uh, yes, I have followed up. Um, they are on site. The, the first portion of the work was to test the grouts that they have. Um, I understand the tests were very successful. Um, and that they will continue now with the repairs. Um, so there should be quite a bit of action out there. Thank you. A question, a question from me, Arno. Um, related to this, we are still under water restrictions for Martin. I know that you were going to look at it after the last long weekend. Can you tell us where we're at with that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So we look at that on the first day of every week. Uh, myself and the MDC Ops team, they record the levels electronically and we have a look at that. And it's been a very interesting year. Although we've had some rain, it's been in volume, it's been very limited. So the level in the dams actually have only really increased by very marginal limits. Uh, and we're still not in a position where, where we feel confident that those limits are enough to lift the restrictions. Uh, this is something we do on a Monday of every week or a Tuesday, depending on a, on a holiday, um, and we make the call and go from there. So I will, uh, I will let all of you know the moment we decide that we can go off the restrictions. Thank you. A question from Councillor Gordon. Yes, my question is regarding the Martin Dam spillway repair. Um, we have been in um, lucky that we've had this benign weather for so long uh, in terms of council work processes, but it won't last forever. So what is plan B if we have a sudden flip in our weather systems and, and winter arrives early? Dare I say it. Yeah, so plan B for us is to manage those levels in the dams. That's why that is so important. So you'll find that the level that is uh, the dam that is upstream, um, I'm not sure if that's, I think that's dam B, uh, the level in dam B is really low. And the idea is that forms uh, storage capacity for us in case of heavy rain. So most of it will be caught in that upstream dam held there. And then we've got some spare capacity on the downstream dam. So that's the main um, mechanism that we have to protect the dams. Uh, we've got two scows, one on each of the two dams, and that can then regulate the level back down again over time. But the idea really is big rain event will capture all that water, we'll keep it, and then we will scour that out over time. And that's all we can do. Um, so hopefully we can get this repair done before the rain starts um, and at least get through the winter. A question from me, I know the work that's currently being done on the BNC dams, that still means that we're going to have to go back later with some permanent fixes. Is that the status? 
That's a really good question. At the moment, uh, we're looking at this as a temporary repair, <clears throat> but it depends on, on how well the grouts um, uh, perform. We are hoping that we can work with the dam engineers um, and then add potentially add to this to become the permanent solution so we don't have to start from scratch and do something completely different. Um, so the outcome really of this, of this repair will tell us how far we still have to move to get to a permanent solution. Thank you very much. While we've still got you on the line, would you like to make some comments around the Bulls Reservoir? Yes, that's that's a really good idea. So the Bulls Reservoir, we received uh, tenders, um, oh, I think from four different companies. The, the winning um, uh, contractor at the moment supplied us with a conforming tender and also a non-conforming tender. So the non-conforming tender is actually a better solution, although it does come with more technical issues that we have to consider. So at the moment, we are working through those technical issues with, um, with the contractor and also with other councils all over the country to be sure that we tick all the boxes and that we are 100% confident uh, before we proceed. I think though, that's pretty close to coming to an end and we should have an outcome on that by the end of this week. Um, once that happens, they can establish site and we can move on with the construction. Um, um, I'm just asking for a further comment around that from probably the chief executive. You're referring really to two different design options and the pluses and favours on both of them? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I can talk from, from here on, I thank you for, for that. Um, um, what uh, we haven't um, entered into the, the final negotiation um, with the contractor yet. So um, we, uh, we have a recommended position. Uh, there's been some questions that I've asked of Arno. He's come back to me with um, most of that information today. Um, and I'm comfortable that it would, uh, I'll run that past yourself, um, Deputy Mayor and Chair of the um, Assets Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. As I said, I'd like us now to include item 11 on the top 10. I call it 10B if you would prefer. Um, Hereford Street um, work. The Hereford Street um, subdivision is obviously not our subdivision, but we do have some service commitments and agreements in terms of access to that site. Could we have an update around that please? Um, uh, yes, um, if I'll, I'll just jump in there. So the update at the moment is we have asked GHD consultants to do the detailed design for us. <clears throat> the detailed design there can be quite challenging because of the camber of the road and the levels. And then we have a lot of services in that area. So, so they're working on that and that should be completed probably in the next month or so. Um, and then obviously once that's done, we can move onwards to start with construction. Thank you. Any questions around that? Councillor Carter. Uh, as far as not around that one, I bet that the uh, mushroom involves, but uh, you want to finish this one? Sorry, you're referring back to the mushroom involves? Affirmative. Um, and your question? Is, is that it has been discussion regarding the keeping or the um, demolition of that? Um, um, so, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor. The, um, we are going to public consultation on the strengthening or demolition of the, the mushroom, as it's uh, easily called. Um, that is uh, an option within the proposed contract we have with the, the uh, uh, with the tender for the construction of the reservoir, um, depending on which way our public consultation goes. Um, and and I just, well, I didn't mention it before, but I mean, the, the value of that contract is significant. It's just under a million dollars. So it's uh, worthwhile to report that within this report as well, Your Worship, I think. Thank you very much. Are they, are they looking at uh, utilizing the mushroom itself rather than just destroying it? No. Thank you. I'll go back to questions around Hereford Street Heights. No, just I will just make the 
Sorry, Councillor Wilson. Uh, just a just a general comment, Your Worship. Uh, whilst you're uh, mentioning Hereford Street Heights, which is a significant uh, development, which has already kicked off, and if anybody's been up there, you'll see that significant work is is already in in, in place there, uh, and that development is certainly moving on at some speed. There are a number of other subdivisions uh, within 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 Martin and the wider Rangitiki district. So I wondered if we were to have a standing item in the top 10 projects to be top 11, if it couldn't just be subdivisions per se that may cover any uh, subdivisions that are uh, underway and I believe will uh, will be further underway in the future. So if we could just have a subdivision sub sub subtitle. Thank you very much. Totally support that. I think we can just take that as a given. Sorry about that. I'm just was in conference with the chief executive. I'll pass back to the chief executive some further information around Hereford Heights. Um, what what I uh, I've done with the help of some of my team uh, is to go back into the council resolution uh, of of last year, um, and the council resolution um, approved that a development agreement be signed uh, with the Hereford Heights subdivision. Um, in that development agreement, it uh, allows for council to um, to design and construct an intersection. Um, it's silent on the value of that. Uh, the, the anticipated budget is going to be in the order of $200,000 to $250,000. Uh, it doesn't attract NZTA subsidy uh, and we will need to work, be working that into uh, our budgets as it wasn't in our long-term plan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, that would be a loan funded capital item. Uh, it will have to be. Thank you. I'll move on to um, the receipt of minutes and recommendations from the committees. So this is attachment. Bear with me just a second. Attachment 12, starting through pages 186 to 194. Um, would somebody like to move the receipt as a block, please? Thank you, Councillor Dunn, Councillor Ash. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. Anybody against? Thank you. It must be the end of the meeting, those that aren't raising their hands. Um, we did, in fact, take the recommendation for the top 10 projects. Um, I failed to get the receipt of the top 10 projects. It's been pointed out by staff and somebody. Thank you, Councillor Belch and Councillor Gordon. Those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Thank you. Were the recommendations associated with that report? I don't think there were. No. There are no recommendations. No. I have a late item. And that is on first is on the naming of Henty Lane. Councillor Belsham. Uh, just going back to item 18, and there was a recommendation uh, from the uh, Community Grants Subcommittee in regards with the unspent funds. Um, and I'm happy to move that recommendation um, as it's read there. Thank you. You're ahead of staff here. So you're talking page nine. Um, and the recommendation would be that the following recommendation from the community grant subcommittee meeting that the community grant subcommittee recommend to council to transfer the unallocated funds of $1,724.55 to the community initiative funds to support recovery of COVID-19. You're happy to move that? Correct, and, and the fund was from the event sponsorship scheme, so I'm not sure um, 
yeah. if that should be reworded. So um, events sponsorship subcommittee, it should actually read. Yeah, thank, thank you. We'll check the wording of that. Um, but I think you're right. Looking for a seconder to it, Councillor Duncan. Um, do you wish to speak further to this? Uh, just in the fact of the light of COVID 19 and, and uh, being able to allocate some money that was unspent from the event sponsorship scheme, um, it was put forward by a member of that um, subcommittee and supported uh, by everyone on that committee that that. Uh, be best utilised uh, for the Community Initiatives Fund to help support that. And we do understand with the with the setting up of the Mayoral Relief Fund um, that um, that will go to um, endeavour projects moving forward out of COVID-19. But if we send, put this money into the Community Initiatives Funds, this will give direct input straight away to some of those people who have applied to that grant scheme. So that was the reasoning for it. Thank you. Any other speakers? Right, I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Everyone supports. Thank you very much, Carrie. Um, I'll now move on to the later item. This is the naming of Kenty Lane. Um, the Chief Executive, do you wish to take us through it? Um, do you wish to speak to it? Sorry. Um, so I will just read out. Um, uh, Thank you. That's okay. Yes, yep. certainly. Um, last August, so titled Naming Henty Lane, which is currently 62 Breddon's Line in Martin. Last August, the Martin Community Committee recommended council approve Henty Lane as a road name. However, council deferred consideration pending clarification whether this was a private or public road. The subdivision approval does not vest the road in council, but the council's road naming policy still applies. However, through an oversight, this information was not conveyed back to council. The recommendation therefore, is that the right of way into the nine lot subdivision of 62 Breddon's Line Martin be named Henty Lane in accordance with the council's policy on naming of streets and roads. Thank you very much. Look, I will so move, and if I get a seconder, I'll speak to this. Thank you, Councillor Wilson, for seconding. Um, my first thought was that I thought there was a delegated authority to the community committees and community boards. In fact, the only delegated authority they had was naming of street names. I didn't see it as essential to come back to council. But regardless, this needs to happen. Um, there is a family connection. This is a, been, it has been proposed by the people doing the subdivision. And I think we should just agree. So I'm speaking obviously in, in support. Does anybody else wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Wilson, Councillor Lambert, and then Councillor Belsham, Councillor Wilson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, uh, just uh, in agreement with what you're saying, I uh, was a member of the Martin Community Committee uh, last year when this uh, topic came up. It is the desire of the developers of that uh, subdivision to have it named. Uh, endorse what you're saying that uh, Henty Lane doesn't have a family has a family connection for these developers, and that is what was requested and approved by the uh, community committee at the time as a recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Lambert. Oh, I just want to hear you spell that. Yeah, it's spelled H E N T Y. Oh, I'm right, okay. Yeah. Hotel Echo November Tango Yankee. Oh, that's okay. No surprises there. I just wanted to know. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Belsham, I think I had you next. Uh, no, my question's been answered. I just um, wanted to ensure that the um, developers were in agreement with the name that was chosen. So thank you. We've had three speakers in favour of the motion. Are there any speakers against? No, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? No one's against. Um, motion is carried. 
I think that that's the end of the late items. I'll need someone to move that we go into committee with regards to a property matter. Councillor Ash, you so moving. Councillor, could we have a second or two there? Councillor Carter, seconding. Those in favour? Everyone. So it'll take a minute because this now ends the live broadcast. Um, for those of you that have managed to sit through